So uh, good afternoon. I'm Stuart Ikeda, 54, a multiracial Japanese European American male with he pronouns, speaking from Arlington, the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, presenting today for the Umbrella Art Center. And again, I'm grateful for the support of my several dedicated colleagues and board members who have been contributing to this project all along today. Um, okay. So the Umbrella is a mission-driven, multifunction, nonprofit art center in Concord, Mass. It's built on the original homelands of the Nipmuc, Musketaquid, and Massachusetts tribal nations, with a mission to enrich lives and build a vibrant and inclusive community through the arts. We're home to vibrant programs in arts education, performing arts, visual art galleries, a distinctive Musketaquid Arts and Environment program, and home to over 55 studio artists. We're housed in a newly renovated facility in the heart of Concord Center Cultural District that had a grand reopening in fall of 2019, following a four year, $25 million construction and expansion campaign. The campaign was necessitated by our 1929 building's age, lack of renovations, and highly limited accessibility. At the front entrance, visitors were met by a daunting array of multiple stairs and landings to enter the gallery and studios on what is today our second floor. We had one poorly functioning elevator, we had non-compliant room design and signage. We had inaccessible toilets. Our increasingly successful award-winning performing arts program was housed in an infamously uncomfortable and inaccessible, air quotes, theater, better suited for student assemblies than for performing arts experiences. In 2019, we launched our new professional stage company in a state-of-the-art multi-theater facility with expanded wheelchair accessible seating, backstage areas, green rooms and bathrooms, and well outfitted with assistive devices with ramps inside and out. Other changes included new walkways and entryways, parking plans, landscaping, elevators, accessible signage, dance studios, classrooms, gallery spaces, all designed for safety, ergonomics, green energy practices, and full compliance with accessibility and code requirements. Designed at the heart of the building, connecting all of our programs is an open, airy, ramp accessible lobby and art gallery. The concept was to create Concord's living room with free entry, comfortable furniture, public Wi-Fi, accessible bathrooms and signage, where people could relax, meet, and engage with art freely. At our grand opening in fall 2019, we celebrated our new facility that felt so much more inviting and welcoming. But despite improvements, there was recognition, especially among younger staff, that our programs, audiences, and active community lacked diversity. The reality of our community is this, Concord is 91.64% white, likely higher as census figures on the non-white population percentage are skewed by including the incarcerated prison population in town. The vast majority of our staff, advisory, board, resident studio artists, and audiences are white. Given the givens of our surroundings, we endeavored to become a more accessible and inviting space and foster meaningful cultural exchange largely through our programming. Our stage company routinely features underrepresented talent, playwrights, and stories. We've partnered with groups like Asian American Playwrights Collective and Front Porch. We hosted the town's certainly first blackout show with August Wilson's Fences. We've hosted programs for and exhibited work by prisoners incarcerated in Concord. 
We created an arts and environment curricula for Lowell Public Schools and after school arts clubs for Metco students. We've invited in artists of color and international artists to lead workshops. We hosted the Robbins House exhibition and Frederick Douglass performances when it was forced to close during the pandemic. So like our UPI friends at New Bedford Museum, we have been doing good things by intuition, but not by intention. And we came to believe that participating in UPI and embracing its principles could really help us focus and formalize what we'd been working on all along in fits and starts. During and after construction, Anita Walker toward the facility and encouraged us to embrace the benefits of UPI to become accessible to new audiences through other practices in the same way that we had invested in accessibility and compliance in our physical plant facilities. But like so many cultural organizations, we were defibrillated by the upheaval surrounding George Floyd's murder and rising critiques of systemic inequities rife in the larger cultural sector in Boston and elsewhere. We embarked on an accelerated campaign to identify and confront invisible structural inequities in our organization and to build an organization that was proactively anti-racist. In summer 2020, the Umbrella staff undertook intensive discussions and readings on privilege, racism, and allyship with Tete Kobla, one of our board members. We created a standing anti-racism task force to review and suggest steps toward becoming an anti-racist organization. We amended our mission, reviewed all of our practices, formulated anti-discrimination policies for staff, teachers, volunteers, and our board. We made some organizational strides toward intentional change. We created a formal DEIA committee to create organization-wide multi-year DEIA action plans that addressed everything from recruitment, training, budgeting, leases, curricula, curation practices, and other programming. We expanded this committee to include board members with extensive experience in HR and diversity. We, the board adopted the MCC's UPI principles and we applied to the ILN to learn and share best practices for expanding accessibility writ large. We engaged advisors, trainers, and user experts, all with the goal of helping us set a long-term vision of the umbrella as a leader in advocating DEIA in the arts in our region. Which brings us to our access project problem and an opportunity that we began to recognize while participating in this cohort. In the whirlwind of activity, generated by the twin committees that we've been working on, UPI and DEIA. We've amassed a vast mountain of learnings, readings, training resources, web tools, follow-up commitments that's eaten up many, many staff hours and resources. And so very similar to our friends at Theater Espresso last week, we are left asking, how do we end this bottleneck and spread the learnings to our wider community? Can we efficiently meld these efforts to more effectively and sustainably communicate both internally and externally to let audiences know what we've been doing? How do we do this sustainably amidst high staff turnover, constricted bu budgets and limited capacity? Plus, how do we do this work within the framework of engaging two paid user experts? So our solution, in short term and long term, is to engage user experts to help us build an, a sustainable infrastructure. First, we're going to engage our local user expert and DEIA committee member, James Mercer. James is a lovely fella. He's an African-American high school art student uh, from Concord who has been a valued member of the committee uh, throughout uh, this, this whole period uh, through his high school volunteer program. We're proposing to offer him a paid role this summer to help us organize the collected resources of a year's worth of DEIA and UPI activities, learning and training. Um, and as he is a member of an audience we want to engage but have failed to, he will especially serve as a user expert to help us formulate strategies 
to enhance the accessibility, appeal, and services at the umbrella for young artists and audiences of color in our region. We're already talking about one exciting uh, pro potential project for him uh, to continue to engage him even into the fall and the next school year. James is invited to collaborate with artist, teacher, and activist Neda Cuevas to organize a protest and social justice themed gallery exhibition featuring diverse high school artists from all around the region. In the medium term, James's organization project uh, to create a DEIA library uh, for us will help us package and distribute the resources that we've been collecting to the staff, board, and others for training purposes, onboarding, and so forth. The library will inform our work uh, in the staff as we embark on restaffing, strategic planning, and program reevaluation this summer as we get ready to reopen. The library will also assist in the discovery process by our second user expert, DEI Arts Consulting. They're a Philadelphia-based diversity consulting firm specializing in research and training specific to arts organizations. We are engaging them to survey our community, audit our practices, and bring focus to our long-term goals, including our UPI goals, and plans for formalized ongoing training of staff and board and evaluation of the EIA. All of this is to enforce our long-term goals of going from accessibility to actually creating belonging and community to create the infrastructure for sustainable DEIA and B values to be baked into everything we do the umbrella enriches lives and builds a vibrant and inclusive community through the arts.